Hi, welcome to International Nature Journaling Week 2024. I'm Melinda Nakagawa, a nature journaling mentor here in California, United States, and I want to introduce today's topic of reproduction and replication. So as you wander in nature today, think about how nature reproduces and replicates and look for that um, and open your awareness, open your senses and explore. It might be in the form of flowers, big showy ones or small diminutive ones. Um, lean in and use your sense of smell, your sense of touch and listen. Can you hear the pollination partners that might be helping in this reproduction, um, whether they're bees or birds or butterflies, and sit for a while and, and wait for them to appear. Um, in animals, it might be different behaviors that you're seeing or hearing, and whether they're birds or other wildlife um, in your nearby nature, um, try different times of the day and see what you can find. Hi, I'm Amy. I'm from Melbourne, Victoria in Australia. I originally grew up in Gippsland, which is the country of Victoria in a tiny town. Uh, and when I became an adult, I moved up to Melbourne, which most of us do when we do uni. And now I live in the suburbs of Melbourne, just east. And I'm going to show you what a typical home in the suburbs looks like. So this is a pretty standard backyard. Um, most of us just have a lawn. Sometimes we have some established trees and just planting random stuff around. Um, I particularly wanted to show you my favourite tree, which is this Banksia. Now, Australia has uh, 173 Banksia trees um, that are native. I think only one of them is not native. And the thing I like about this, and I don't, I'm not an expert in nature stuff, but the Banksia will produce both female and male parts of the flower. And you can see here, I have this chair ready for me to stand up. So just, oh, I'm just reaching up to show you. So that, is the flower and this is the seed pod. Um, it's one of my favorite things to draw. It's what I always use when I'm doing my intro to nature journaling. I give them a Banksia seed pod. Um, a lot of the time we say it reminds us of the Banksia men from May Gibbs' stories. Uh, yeah, I just love it. Um, this kind of flowers all year round. So even though we are just hitting winter, um, I kind of get this all the time. And it often drops everything. So I don't need to collect and pull things off this tree because it just drops like crazy. Um, you can see, oh, look. So here's one, a little seed pod, but here is both. So I can get it a bit more close up. So seed pod, flower. Um, and the Banksia is one of those tr plant trees and plants that you hear of that will require fire to open up its seed pods. Obviously this one can do it without fire, but this is just the example if you haven't seen one before. Um, yeah, I love it. I love the how the a classic feature of a Banksia is this top side being one colour and the underside being very stark in contrast. And it's these beautiful lines. yeah it's fun but always challenging to sketch but I'm always loving how varied it is it's a good challenge and a fascinating plant hey everyone my name is Kathleen and I'm an artist and art educator based in the Philippines 
and I am so excited for this year's Nature Journaling Week prompts, which revolve around nature's cycle. One of the prompts for this year's Nature Journaling Week is reproduction and replication. And today, I will show you where I find them in nature and how I go about doing a nature journal with it. So let's go! One of my favorite species to document are figs. The Philippines hosts a number of fig species and every time I learn about another one during nature walks, hikes, I just have more questions about them. Figs are interesting plants. Some of them are called strangling figs, which grow and hug other trees and eventually kill them. Apart from this, figs are also considered one of the keystone species, meaning they support or play an important role in the life of other organisms in an ecosystem. Did you know a single fig species supports a unique species of wasp? That's how important they are. And that is where my interest comes in. Majority of the life cycle of wasps are spent inside these specialized structures called the cygonium. These structures contain the flowers of the fig inside. The female wasp carrying pollen from another fig enters the cygonium and once inside she lays her eggs and fertilizes the flowers with the pollen she brings. After the wasps hatch, grow, and mature, they mate and reproduce, and unfortunately for the wingless male wasps, they die inside the cyconium. The female wasps, however, escape into the world to find another fig tree and lay their eggs in a new cyconium, repeating the cycle. This entire process is fascinating and important to document to show how these fig and wasp species depend on each other. Now with all of these interesting facts, you can just imagine how my mind is racing whenever I see a fig species. So how do I go about documenting them? There are three prompts in Nature Journaling by John Weir Laws, which I also employ whenever I do Nature Journal. First, I notice figs have various appearances, and depending on the formation of their fruits or the cyconium, the appearance of their trunk, the color, the buttressing roots, all of these will help us determine what kind of fig species they are. Second, I wonder. This is where we ask questions. I wonder what kind of wasps are inside. I wonder if we can already eat this. And lastly, it reminds me of some characteristics we cannot necessarily justify just by drawing them. So we need to use words to describe scent, textures, to complete the sensorial description or documentation of these species. For example, is this Ficus olmifolia or is is in Filipino, which means to scrub. This pertains to its characteristic rough texture like a sandpaper. And that's it for me today. I hope you learned something and I hope I was able to encourage you to join this year's Nature Journaling Week. Hello everyone. My name is Robin Lee Carlson. It is May as I am making this drawing and I have been thinking a lot about the two vigilant scrub jays that are raising a new nest of babies this spring in one of our backyard trees. As the weather heats up here in California's dry lowlands, the pair are on constant alert to any threats in their vicinity. Whenever we have the windows open, they are alert to noises inside that tell them we are here and awake. When we first stir in the morning, they're right at the bedroom window, squawking loudly to warn us off their territory. These drawings are made from a series of pictures I took of one of the Jays as she studied us from just outside the screen door, occasionally squawking loudly. What I learned recently, though, is that scrub jays' raucous warnings and all bird warning calls share information that is much more nuanced than just an all-purpose warning, warning. Research has been showing that bird vocalizations, including alarm calls, are much richer and full of information than was previously understood. Alarm calls, specifically, can convey important information about the type of threat and what that threat is doing, such as whether the predator is coming from the sky or the ground, or whether it is on the move or is perching. And it is not only other jays that can understand this language, but many other bird species, and also mammals, and even some lizards. Even in my urban backyard, I think about the other species listening in on the scrub jays' cries, letting them know that the jays are keeping an eye on the neighborhood. And I think about the complexities and nuances of the sounds of other familiar birds around me too. The killdeer, whose sharp cries alerted us to her presence at the end of our block, apparently nesting in a neighbor's stony front yard. The mockingbirds, singing loudly at unconscionable hours of the night that are remarkably skilled imitators of other sounds in their environment, but who are not born with that skill and have to develop it slowly through much practice. 
the wild turkeys now abundant in our area, whose purring calls to each other as they wander and forage are some of my favorite bird noises ever. So we invite you to explore nature, your nearby nature, with the lens of reproduction and let us know what you discover.